ابتدایی یه فرصت خوب حالا پشت مدافع خدا داد عزیزی توی دروازه گل گل برای ایران خدا داد عزیزی پاس هم روی زمین گشت سرداراس بود به توی دروازه سرداراس بود گل به نام آسمون به برای ایران بزنه کریم ازداری فرد گول توی هر بازه کریم ازداری فرد در بازه پرتبال باز شد علی دایی صاحب توب توی هر بازه ازداری یه شبا حرکت از کچان نجات پرسه برو کچان نجات توی در بازه گول برای ایران Hello, welcome back to Gobazan Podcast. I'm Ariala Verdi. I'm joined by two great friends uh, of the podcast. First of all, regular panelist, uh, Pejman Pars. Uh, how are you doing, Pejman? Hi, Arya. Nice to be back once again, and nice to hear your voice. Good to have you back. And also our dear friend, Mr. Amir Hashimi, former Iran national team and Este Lal player, also a UEFA A license coach. Uh, Mr. Hashimi, how are you doing, my friend? Hello, Arjun. Thank you. I'm fine, and thanks for inviting me in your program. Thanks for coming on. It's a pleasure to have you. First, we'll be analyzing the squad list called up by Dragan Skocic um, uh, for this match between South Korea and Lebanon. Uh, next, we'll preview the Iran versus South Korea match to be played on Thursday, March 24th, um, at the Seoul World Cup Stadium. Uh, we also have a short segment with Steve Han from uh, Goal.com, South Korean football writer. We'll speak about the na- uh, national team of South Korea with him later on in the episode. Uh, just quickly, uh, 28 players have been called up. Uh, Payam Niazman, Mohamed Reza Akhbari, Siyavash Yazdani, Arif Agassi, Saleh Ardani, Zobar Niknafs, Surush Rafi, Mehdi Qaidi, Kaver Rezaei, and Shahab Zahidi are dropped from the previous squad. Um, we're going to speak about the goalkeepers first. Uh, obviously, as I just mentioned, Niaz Mand hasn't been called up. Actually, the first time he hasn't been called up by Skocic since his reign. Um, Hossein Hosseini comes in for him, uh, obviously as a third-choice goalkeeper. But of course, he's been very good for Estegl all this season in the Persian Gulf Pro League. He's also had the most clean sheets and he's he's performing well Mr. Hashim I want to start with you first what are your thoughts on on Hosseini's um, call up uh, yeah actually I understand uh, the uh, uh, head coach of Iran he invited Hosseini as you told just now you gave the answer already and he had uh, lots of clean sheets and uh, Sterlal is uh, on the top of the competition and he's doing very well and uh, i think if if is the time that he gets a chance to be invited uh, it's the right time now and it's not saying that he will be starting in the goal but but uh, is starting uh, for his career national team of course yeah absolutely and and Pejman, you know it's a bit of a shame for Niaz man because ultimately he's he's been given a few chances at Portimonense in Portugal and he's actually not done too badly in his chances that he's been given um you know but unfortunately in recent uh, months he hasn't really played much and i think that's played into that decision to to call up Hosseini um you know, is that is it is it unfair on on Niaz man no not at all um When was his last game? It was like December or maybe even January in a cup game. Um, that's, that's not enough if you want to be a national team player. So I think it was a, a correct move. Hard for him because he went to Europe, uh, probably thinking both, both developing and playing. I'm sure he has de- developed a lot, but the minutes are, are too few for a uh, that kind of important role a goalkeeper either plays or don't plays you don't get subbed in or subbed out so uh, it's good to give uh, Hossein a a new chance yeah I do think that Niaz man will make a move in the summer I think I don't think he'll lose a spot for the World Cup though I do think he will be in the World Cup squad he's a he's a top goalkeeper we know Payam's a a really good player but you know unfortunately his lack of game time has has dropped for the for the squad okay let's move on to the center backs uh, we have Majid Hosseini Khalil Zadeh uh, Hossein Kanoni is back in 
we'll come to that in a second. Uh, RF Golami and also Farshad Faraji. Um, come to you, Pejman. Uh, first of all, uh, in this match, uh, who do you expect to play uh, for against uh, South Korea, and uh, what are your thoughts on, on the selection? Uh, sorry, can you re- uh, repeat the question and, and the names? Yeah, just obviously Majid Hosseini, Khalil Zadeh, uh, Kanoni, Golami, and Faraji from Paris Police that have been called up. And, you know, what are your thoughts on the selection and um, who do you expect to start? Uh, well, for me, Faraji was the biggest surprise, to be honest. I think he's there to, to watch and learn. Uh, I can't see uh, any reason why uh, Dragon Scottish would change his, like, super duo, uh, Kanoni and uh, Khalil Zadeh. I mean, Khalil Zadeh have been massively criticized, but uh, his track record in the national team is really good. His uh, teamwork with Kanoni is decent, but that was maybe only due to the fact that Majid Hosseini and uh, uh, um, Majid Hosseini was away for a long time due to injury. Now that he's back and have been playing uh, regularly at um, Kayseri Sport, I think I would love to see a duo with Kanoni and Hosseini. That would be my two first choices for centre back. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what about you, Mr. Hashimi? Actually, uh, I see uh, that the changes uh, in the centre back in Iran uh, actually the the uh, Khalil Zadeh and Kanani they played almost all the games, but but uh, I think I think uh, I, I'm agree with Ma- uh, Pejman. Uh, I think the Majid Hussein is the time that Majid Hussein to get his position back and to get a chance actually to play uh, against Korea. And uh, you have to look also uh, to the quality of the uh, opponent. Uh, You are playing against the team. Uh, They are moving a lot in the spaces. They are not uh, just strong on the ball. They are also used the spaces a lot. And with Khalil Zad uh, uh, and uh, Ken Ani, we just have two uh, markers. Uh, and center back. You need someone who can also uh, uh, the, cover the uh, spaces. I think Majid Hussein it would be better option uh, if if he play. And uh, I, I like to see him. And yeah. about Faraji, uh, you know, um, uh, for him is also uh, the chance to uh, to to be with the team to get some experience, to know the environment of the national team. And uh, we don't have lots of uh, good center backs. Uh, we have good, but not in the national uh, team level. And I hope Moteza or Aleganji will get in, uh, fit and he will play. And I think we will need him a lot in the World Cup. Yeah, well, actually, Mortiza will be part of the squad. I think he'll train with the squad, but I don't know if he'll play. Um, obviously, he hasn't been called up, but he will be in the training camp, uh, as I've as I've been hearing. Oh, I mean, here's the thing. Uh, Majid, I believe, is a player who can really, uh, not just as a defender, but also his, his ball-playing ability, you know, his ability to play from the back is very impressive. And he's had a couple of really good moments for Kayseri Sport this season. He's improving. Um, of course, he's not in the best team in Turkey, but he's still playing at a, a decent European level. So I do think that he does have a, a lot more, let's say, you know, experience from that high level, high performance level teams. You know, so hopefully he gets a chance to play. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe we'll, we'll speak, come on to it in a second, considering the fact that he's only called up one right back for the South Korea game there could be a chance that Kali and Zadeh actually plays at right back and then Majid and uh, Kanoni play in the middle. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but I want to speak about Kanoni very quickly as well. I think it's important to touch on this topic because obviously his ban has been partially overturned. Initially, it was um, he was banned for the next two matches against Korea and Lebanon, but now uh, the Federation has um, announced that he's banned only for two friendly matches and not for the next two qualifiers, meaning he can be called up for these two games. But after these games, we have friendlies before the World Cup. He have to, he'll have to miss two of those friendlies. Um, and, his, and his fine is still stands. He's still fined for the, the, the thing that he did. 
for me, if I'm being honest with you, it, I think it shows uh, a lack of discipline, a uh, lack of um, ownership of uh, a mistake that was very obvious and very uh, vocally everyone heard it. You know, it, the Federation have really, um, they really probably put themselves in a really bad situation because now they said to everyone that, you know, it, all the players can do anything they want technically. You know, if he can do that, you know, what's, what's stopping from other players from doing similar things? I'm not saying they will, but ultimately it puts, a, it puts out a bad message to the rest of the players, especially the young players who, who have to, you know, learn from these situations. And I don't see what kind of message that sends out when you, you, you come back and you say he's only banned for friendlies. And especially the fact that Taremi got banned from two qualification matches for not answering his phone. Now, you know, whether it was right or wrong, I don't know, but ultimately he was banned and and Canon is now okay to play when he's done a much, much worse thing. What are your guys' thoughts on that? Yes, actually, uh, it is, uh, I don't understand it too. I'm almost 20, 21 year uh, coach in Holland, in Netherlands, and if you have a, a reason to uh, to to uh, ban the player for discipline uh, reasons, and you cannot turn it back, and uh, and you change it to the friendlies, and uh, I don't understand this, and it's difficult. Uh, some sometimes you think it's difficult to understand, and sometimes you say, okay, that's that's that's. that's if this kind of things happens, it will happen just in Iran, you know. But they have to be clear from the first moment they will bend him. They have to say it, we will uh, do that because yeah. for two friendless. And you, you don't have, you cannot say we, we will do that for next two games. You know? I want to ask you a question because as a coach as well, uh, you know, of course, this ban has been overturned uh, partially by the Federation. But do you not believe even Skocic himself, if he, if he wants to send a message to his players and he wants to set a discipline for his team, that he should still stick with the decision that was originally placed and say, yeah, even though it's been overturned partially, I'm still not going to call him up because he's done something that is, is outside of the national team's discipline. You know, do you not think he should say no? No, no, you know, the, 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 there's a the difference between the bending discipline uh, by the, the coach, the national team coach, or by the federation. If the federation has done, uh, had to, to decide to bend uh, Kanani, could be different than the decision of the coach, because the coach is thinking just about the yeah. football and the focus on the technical things about the football. And the federation has decided to ban them, which means uh, every coach wants to win the game. You know, every coach wants to uh, to 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 make a formation, a first eleven in his squad. Uh, they can win of the course. game. Yeah, and 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 the decision from federation is much different than the decision of the coach. And I think the uh, two uh, matches, the two games. He was bended, was decided of the federation, not I, from the coach side. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, I have to disagree. The reason why I say that is not because I don't agree with you in terms of the coach ultimately has to pick the best team, no doubt about it. And I think 100% Kanani is probably our best centre-back performing just now. He's done really well in the qualifiers. My only thing, and Pej, when I'm going to come to you in a second, is when you think about, the, it's an, first of all, this is a national team. We're going to go to our World Cup in eight months' time. Uh, we don't want our the image of the national team to be this way. And in my opinion, and I'm, maybe this is just my opinion, you can, you can completely disagree with me, but it, when, when a player has done something wrong and, uh, and uh, it, it, it's damaging the national team's image the way it did, very briefly, obviously it's not massively gone out overseas either in, in media, it stayed in Iran, which is good. But still, I, I do believe that the coach should take some level of responsibility himself. And we go back to, you know, the old saying of would, would, would this have, uh, would Kairos have let this happen? Would he have kept Kanani in the team? I don't know. 
but they, it, I do believe there's a lack of discipline within the entire national team right now. Pejman? Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, sorry can, can I tell you? Yes, something? you can. Yeah, of course. I, I didn't tell you that it has to be like that. I didn't tell you that the coach has to let him play or not. I, and I didn't tell you that Ken yeah, yeah. is the best center back we have. I just tell you there's a difference between uh, decision from federation and decision from the coach. Yeah. I agree. I agree. The national team, no, nobody is the above national team. Nobody, not even the coach. And I, I agree that the national team is not a place for personal issues. And, but but uh, how it's happened that now they will let him play or they invited in the squad, I don't understand it even. Well, here's the thing, uh, a couple of points. First of all, uh, I think this is like an internal struggle between different forces in the football federation. Uh, overturning this ban. So I don't think that uh, Kanoni or Skocic have any part in this. I think, you know, now that Iran has got a new president for the uh, federation, maybe this is uh, one of the reasons that it's been overturned. To be honest, I don't know. And I totally disagree with you, Arya, that the coach should uh, have any say in this regarding uh, putting like a, a uh, making a disciplinary disciplinary ban or whatever you want to call it for Kanani's actions because at the end of the day he didn't do anything uh, he, he didn't breach any protocol, he didn't do any mistake he was talking about doing something but he yeah. didn't do it cool. so uh, I think you make we a good shouldn't point there. Yeah, so uh, I don't know why uh, we should even bring uh, what Kairos would have done here. Uh, I think Kairos would have stuck up for his players and, and said, like, hey, I, I protect my players because they, they are the national team and we are one and all that kind of uh, talk that he used to <laughs> yeah. say. I want to so, add something just very quickly because yeah. I think it's interesting you said that, and we want to move on from the topic, obviously, because it's quite a long topic, but you said that, you know, he, he's getting, he didn't do anything technically. All he did was make a phone call, but it's just my I said on Twitter as well so if he had done anything does that mean he wouldn't get banned for the the two friendlies and he, he would also get banned for the the South Korea and Lebanon game do you know what I mean so it kind of and then and then and then my, back to my original question to then why did Tari get banned because I get an Amma you know yeah exactly uh, we, so we finished that, that's why I think that's why I think matter. The, the decision was was just strange, but anyway, let's move on. Um, let's go to the fullbacks. Obviously, Moharami is injured against, is suspended against South Korea. Um, obviously, we have Nur Afghan, Milad Mohammadi, and Ismaili Far. We only called up one right back. Hardani wasn't called up. Um, let's speak about that. Obviously, Hardani has done pretty well for Estelol recently. Uh, he got an assist against Press Police as well, and in, in the derby. Um, we had a question from uh, Twitter, from uh, at ERI1806, and also at Persian Predicts. They both ask, uh, what, why did Harden not get called up? Yes, that's, uh, that's a very, very good question. And uh, I don't understand. I, uh, in my eyes, um, I saw Harden already two years ago that he will be the future fullback of your own national team. And he's the one of the great potential at this moment for this position. And now we have one fullback. They already played lots of games, but he's yeah, he's not allowed to play next game. And I don't understand why he's not in the squad, Hadani. Hadani is the great player. He has a great uh, dynamic. Uh, he has uh, lots of uh, attacking potential and he's very, very uh, strong in his defending uh, tasks. And uh, I don't know what the coach thinking. Uh, uh, he, he, I don't believe he will play with three defenders against Korea. Uh, and uh, if he wants to play with three, three defenders, he even needs as, a extra good and dynamic fullback. Uh, but maybe, maybe what you told, uh, he will play with uh, 
خلیل زاده yeah. even uh, even حسین and on the right side yeah uh, and but but you have a smiley fat of course and uh, i don't know for such a game and uh, you you will take a risk uh, uh, to to put to put uh, uh, an experienced player yeah. on capped as well he's not even played a game i, I, I mean uh, in the national team level against such a, a, a very 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 uh, experienced and strong uh, uh, south korean uh, uh, team um i i i hope that um, mrs kochic uh, can explain uh, and uh, to the people why they have done this because because uh, even if sadr mahrami can play i think saleh has to be in this squad that's my my meaning i'm not the coach of the iran national team of course he is he's is free he he has a, he has to invite what he thinks is good for national team but uh, my opinion is that as, as uh, saleh is one of the future fullback of iran national team what do you want to make of this well i agree yeah, i think uh, hardani should have been in the squad especially now that maharami missing the first game but uh, it would be interesting to see who will take that responsibility i can even see like uh arif qolami being on on yeah, the right side there actually potentially uh, yeah it, it could happen or maybe uh, like uh, a big surprise like probably having milad mohammadi on that side although he always plays on the on the left side left, but yeah. you know yeah it's not impossible to him there or, or like even ehsan haj safi getting mm. uh, that responsibility so yeah. uh, i thought maybe what? khalil zade because he's played that right back for his club uh, al rayan but we'll yeah. see we'll sure see. We'll I, see. i think it's still a shame i would mention it every time that rami rezaian is in the squad now this is back in iran as well and he's a right back and he's he's a decent player so yeah let's just I... hope uh, whoever plays will make a good impact Yeah, I really hope that because all, all because obviously on the left wing for South Korea is Hyung Min Son, and uh, you know whoever plays against him has to be on their game, you know. So it's not going to be easy. And okay, let's move on to the midfielders. Obviously, as as, as I mentioned, we have uh, since a suspension for Said Zatullahi, who got a yellow card accumulation. So he's uh, not going to play against South Korea, but he'll back for a Lebanon game. Uh, of course, we also have Nurulahi, Hai Safi, uh, Bai Daimiri, Mirada Salak, uh, Kamale Konrabinya, and also a new call-up for Mehdi Mehdipur, who's been very impressive for Estegval once again. Another, another Estegval player who's done really well. Um, Pejman, I want to come to you. Who do you think would replace uh, Saeed in the middle? Uh, and how many players should we play in the middle? Um, it's a good question. Uh, I think that we will... Once again, here a solution with uh, Ehsan Haj Safi playing in the middle might happen because he's done that before and he's got that defensive qualities and he's been playing regularly in, in Greece. So I can see that happening actually. Uh, we saw that uh, Samo Rodus, he replaced Nurulahi when he didn't play the last game. So could we see uh, uh, a new transfer Salman? To be honest, I don't think so. He haven't played that much since the last uh, national game for, for his club, uh, Brentford. So uh, I think uh, I think that uh, Ehsan Haj Safi will play somewhere, somehow. In the middle, on the left side, maybe even on the right side. Uh, I think he's, he's too important of a player. He's too experienced to not yeah. be using him for, for this game. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, Hai Safi actually has been playing in midfield for AK as well recently. Um, he's done a little bit more, a little bit more game time for that club in Greece. Um, Mr. Hashimi, I want to ask you. Obviously, uh, there's a few players like Mehdi Medipur, Milad Salak, uh, Kamal Komyabinya. Of course, Vaid Amiri is there as well. I, I expect him to start against South Korea. Uh, what are your thoughts? I I think uh, the, uh, you have to see how the South Korea will play. You know they have played in last two games uh, with two uh, uh, strikers, which means uh, the first game uh, they played with 
4-1-3-2. And the next uh, game, they played last game, they played 4-4-2 and on the one line on midfield. And uh, which means uh, they have always uh, 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 two players uh, on the, uh, uh, they can play in the center of midfield in attacking uh, positions. That means that Iran has to make a choice uh, if they, Iran wants to play with one number six defending midfield or they want to play with two defending midfielders. And if they play with two different midfielders, I'm agree with Tejman. I think that Nurullahi and Haisafi will play there. But if they want to play with one uh, defending midfielders, just one number six, I think it can be or Salak or Nurullahi. But uh, the uh, I think uh, Amiri will play. He will play definitely. And I'm not sure uh, if uh, Nurulai play on six uh, and Amiri plays on the left side uh, as, as number eight. And who will take a responsibility for number 10, 10 position? It can, it can be Qudus uh, uh, or it can be uh, Sadar. And and uh, I'm 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 because we need we need we need players uh, to can handle the ball very fast because uh, South Korea will play on our health and uh, and they will play very high and we need to move uh, like counter attack or reaction football very fast and that's why we need against South Korea and uh, to, to get the results over there. Yeah. Uh, uh, once more, uh, depending on the coach, if he decides to play with two defending midfielders or one. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's quite hard to see um, Scottish not playing Osmond and Tarami together up front. Uh, I think most likely that means a 4-4-2, unless you play a diamond midfield. I think it's more likely that he'll play a 4-4-2. Um, as a result, I do believe that he will play the two in midfield. I think Ahmad and, and Hoy Safi most likely will start together. Um, I think Vahid Amiri will probably play as a left midfielder and you know, as a wide left position. And, you know, you could probably see a guy like Jahan Bach on the right-hand side, you know, just to balance it up a little bit. Um, coming to that position then, the wingers, obviously, Jahan Bach called up. Uh, I think he will probably be one of the captains, maybe Hai Safi will be the captain for the for the game if he plays. Someone will do, of course, attacking midfielder, uh, Ali Qori Um Hasn't been his best of form recently, but obviously uh, we'll see how he does uh, against South Korea and Lebanon. Lebanon. Mehdi Torabi uh, is also called up, and also Amir Hossein Hossein Sadu has been very impressive for Estegol also. Uh, no Mehdi Qaidi this time. Uh, he hasn't played a lot on, from the start for... Uh, Shabab al in, uh, in uh, UAE. I want to ask you guys about uh, this, these, these players, obviously, um, very exciting players. Obviously, we've got a lot of talent in that position. Uh, what, are, what are our thoughts? Uh, uh, if I may, uh, I just go uh, back to the Ehsan uh, al you know? Uh, the the Korean players they are very fast players they are uh, speedy players uh, they move a lot and I think uh, it's not the game for Haj Safi because uh, the first few 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 distance uh, short distance and long distance you need a dynamic and fast player and uh, I don't believe that uh, Haj Safi will play I believe that. Amiri will get a, a role even if he's one of the uh, defending midfielders will be Amiri. And uh, there is a big chance, but you told uh, they, they will play with mid, four midfielders and uh, John Bash will be wide in one side and uh, they can do that. And I, I understand and it has to be like that, that both Sadar and, and uh, Tarami, Tarami will play also. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Pejman, I want to ask you, do you think that the likes of uh, Koli Zade, um, you know, should he, should he be starting? Obviously not best of form right now. Um, obviously Torabi as well. What are your thoughts? I think Koli Zade definitely 
definitely they should start. I don't see why not. Maybe because like we're thinking, uh, Iran won't attack much during probably first half, so he he's he will come to his best use. So that could be a reason. But still, I think his offensive qualities uh, are too good to not be used in this kind of games. And don't uh, don't forget that uh, although we're playing in, in Korea, uh, I, in my opinion, Qolizade, Taremi, Azmoon, they all three separately and together are good enough to make an impact and really scare the Korean defense. So yeah, I yeah. think Qolizade should start. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the final part. Before we do that, though, very quickly, we've got a fan question uh, about um, Mohebi from uh, at Mo SN underscore and at Amir uh, Ishk. Uh, they ask about Mohebi, obviously scored against Benfica and uh, Morense in uh, Portugal. You know, should he be called up, Mohamed Mohebi? I mean, it's a tough competition in a national team. Which position? Should he compete? Mm. Is it the same competition that is with Qali Zad and Torabi? Then it's like, okay, is he competing against Torabi then? Then, then it's kind of different, diff- kind of hard. Uh, I mean, he, he's just there, like knocking on the door, and uh, he's been scoring quite frequently and getting some minutes. So I do believe that Mohabi can be somebody with, if he continues. To, uh, this good to be a part of the yeah. squad for a national team, but it, it's it's tough competition that we're not really used to. Yes, yeah, like easy. having players scoring goals in Europe and not being in the national team. And um, also, maybe you will mention Ali Alipur. He's been yeah. scoring six goals. Maybe it's that that, that not that much, but it's not that bad either. He's been playing regularly. He starts almost every game, or at least uh, gets something. So. Um, and he's not even in, in the squad and like haven't been yeah. for a long time and he's not even mentioned. So and let's not forget Sayad Manesh, who can also play as a winger as well. So he's also in competition with these players. So it's always it's a, there's a exactly. lot of a lot of players to, to compete with. Um Mr. Hashimi, what do you think of the forwards? Obviously, you've got Osmond Taremi, Kaliman Sarifard, uh Sayad Manesh, and that's it. But obviously, before we used to have cover Zain uh, Zahedi as well. Um what, what do you think of this? You know, actually, uh, let's back to Muhebi. I think he's a very good player and uh, he's young, he's good, he's uh, fast. Uh, he has the ability to play one-to-one against the uh, opponent. But don't forget, uh, you see the uh, list of the national team uh, for the strikers. You have Sayyad Manish, uh, Karim, Ansari Fataremi, and Sadar. And you have also in the list of uh, uh, midfielders, for example, uh, Amir Hossein Hossein Zadeh. I think uh, uh, if you look at the list, uh, it's difficult what Pejman said uh, to compete with this list. Uh, Mohebi is very good, but uh, the, these uh, players, uh, they invited also very well. I think Hossein Zadeh is the, in very good shape right now. If you want to give the chance to two young players at this moment, I think Hussein Zadeh has a little bit more credit at this moment. And you have also Sayyad Manish, of course, what you told me. And uh, we, we have a very, 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 very good yeah. uh, strikers and wingers. We have to be proud of our team. Yeah. Yes, I, I, I told you about uh, Mohebi. He's a good player. He's a very technical player, fast. But if if we, if uh, you want to compare him at this moment with someone like uh, Amir Hossein Hossein Zade, I think the credit has to go to Hossein Zade because he's doing also very well. They are both young players, but I think Hossein Zade is at this moment a little bit uh, better choice for national team. It's very difficult to have a, such a young players in national team. We have a we have a very very great. Uh, Strikers and wingers, uh, they, they can be the best of uh, in their uh, own teams in Europe, you know, and uh, uh, we have to be proud of. But I understand the choice uh, if you choose for Hossein Zad or Sayyad Manish and not for Mohebi. Uh, Mohebi is a very good player, but the other players are also very well. Yeah, absolutely. And also, as you brought up, Pejman uh, Ali Poor scoring lots of goals, but again, 
you have great strikers. And obviously, Zahedi is also left out. And Zahedi just moved to uh, Puskas Academia in, in Hungary after leaving Ukraine. Uh, so, you know, we have a lot of players. And obviously, Kavar Rezai also not called up. There is lots. And it's difficult to call all of them up. Of course, you can only do so many. Um, and of course, the most important players at this point in time are Osman and Taremi. You know, if we can keep them fit, uh, they will score goals for us, no doubt about it. So hopefully, fingers crossed, they they, they stay fit. Uh, okay, let's move on to uh, our uh, talk with Steve Han, South Korean football writer for Goal. Let's see what he had to say about South Korea. Okay, I'm joined by my good friend Steve Han, writer for Goal, covering South Korean football. How are you doing, my friend? Hey, my friend. How are you? Thanks for having me again. I'm very good. Thanks for coming back on our podcast. Really appreciate your time. So let's speak about the South Korean squad. Who's been called up? Is there any injuries and suspensions that we need to know about? Sure. Uh, I mean, the biggest absence for this game is uh, midfielder Hwang In Bum, who plays with the Russian club Ruben Kazan. He's been quite possibly, I mean, one, definitely one of the greatest, I mean, one of the one of the most important players for, for Korea in these Asian qualifiers. And this is actually the first game that he'll be missing for Korea in these, in these qualifying, qualifying games. Um, and he has been, he has been an integral part of the team in the sense that he plays multiple roles in, in, in the midfield. He can go box to box. He can sit deep and, and spray passes. He can go forward and, 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 and supply teammates inside the box. So missing him will be, a, it's going to be a huge void to fill for Korea because uh, there's, it, I, I can't necessarily say that he is a better player than all the other midfielders that Korea has, but at the same time, in terms of his style and the skill set that he offers to Korea, there's no one else on the team currently that can replace what he can do for, 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 for Korea. So missing him, it's going to be a big, big, um, big, big absence. And obviously he'll have to be replaced. Uh, we'll see who will be replacing him in the starting lineup. Uh, my guess is that it's going to be a young player named Kim Jin Gyu, who recently earned his move to Jumbo Kyunde, obviously one of the one of the, one of the strongest teams in the K League. But you know, up until last season, he was playing in the second division in the Korean League. So um, it's going to be a, it's going to be a big test for him if he does start. Um, and and you know, Hwang In Bum, that's that's a that's a big absence for Korea. And Hwang Yee Chan, who plays for Wolverhampton, uh, he recently sustained a hamstring injury, but it looks like he's fit for this game. Um, but you know, it's a very uh, weird fit that I can that, that, that I can tell you because, uh, you know, hamstring injuries, you know how those are. Usually it takes, you know, weeks for him to for, for most players to recover. But um, he actually came back after five less than less than a week. So we'll have to see how he plays for Wolves this weekend. And then um, the decision will probably be made as to whether or not Korea will have him for this game. Um, other than that, uh, just a couple injuries at the fullback positions, um, but not a not probably not a big miss. But uh, we'll we'll see how that goes. Goes, um, you know, just little minor minor uh, absences here and there. But obviously, the biggest the biggest absence is is, is Huang and Bum in midfield. Yeah, uh, great. Thanks for that. And obviously, this is a very important match for both teams because if they if they win this match, um, you know they go to that first place position and if they finish first place in the in the group then there's a good chance that they can get pot two in the draw uh, come april um and obviously that that's massive uh, when you think about the qualifying for the second round of the world cup um you know proper when we we speak about this match um there's been some media in in, in south korea who have said that you know they believe south korea is the underdog um, how do you see this match going and what are your thoughts on the sort of um, the importance of it? Well, yeah, I mean, when the Korean media uses the word underdog against Iran, I think it's certainly understandable, you know, in the sense that um, this is a team, you know, the Iranian team that Korea haven't been able to beat in the last 11 years. And, you know, the last time they beat Iran in a 90 minute regulation was actually 2006. So, um, you can it, it's certainly understandable why Korea feel that they may be underdogs going into the game. But my prediction for this game, I mean, I'm sure you remember for the game in Tehran, I optimistically try to, you know, predict that Korea would win one nil, but obviously that didn't happen. Um, so for this game, though, um, the atmosphere around the team is good. Um, this is going to be the first national team game in the capital city. So 
for the first time in a long, long time. And uh, we'll see how many fans turn up. You know, obviously the COVID outbreak in Korea right now is getting worse by the day. But, um, you know, 60,000 fans can enter the game. So we'll see if it's going to be played in, in, in front of a full house. But uh, my prediction for the game, uh, again, I'll make an optimistic prediction just to just to keep myself happy. I'll go one nil South Korea with uh, Son Heung Min's goal. Yeah, look, Son uh, is a <laughs> is a ma- is a massive player for for South Korea. He scored in that in that game in Azadi Stadium. You know, really uh, just a mm-hmm. slice through the defense kind of goal. Um, we had a question on on our Twitter from at uh, Mo S N underscore. He asks, how much of a threat will a player like Son pose to the Iranian defense uh, in this match? Right. Uh, I think it'll depend on what kind of role he'll be playing, what kind of role he'll be instructed to play by by uh, Paulo Bento. Because, uh, like I said, Korea's got a couple injuries um, in their midfield, and it could be a case where the midfielder, um, Lee Jae-sung, who plays for Mainz in Germany, he might actually drop deeper to play in sort of like the defensive midfield or central midfield role, And when in which case Korea would have to find another replacement to play the attacking midfield role, and that role may go to Son, but we'll have to see. Um, Son has played in that position before for the national team, but primarily he plays out wide on the left side. Um, so I think it'll depend a lot on what what position he'll be playing for Korea. But at the same time, when you look back at that goal he scored in Tehran in in, in October, um, that's a that's a trademark um, Son Heung Min goal right there um, because him making that run in behind, um, getting getting to the end of the through ball and then and finishing plays, um, that is his strongest strongest skill um both at club level and also for the country um but like i said uh huang and bum's injury obviously another big factor here because when you go back and look at that play the player who started that sequence was actually huang and bum who escaped yeah. that really intensive pressure from the iranian uh, midfielders um, to start the play so missing him like that may actually affect son's performance as well um but again like i said it's gonna it's gonna depend on on, on what role he's gonna play yeah. because korea's got a couple injuries and you know the, obviously the coach the coach will have to make the decision on that yeah well on, on the flip side iran also are missing some players as well of course as i told you, he is suspended so you know mm-hmm. it, it could it could balance out uh, we'll see how it goes but i appreciate your time steve uh, once again um thank you my writer friend for gold.com and uh, yeah hopefully we'll have you back on uh, in the future maybe after this game <laughs> And uh, Anytime. All, all the best for the World Cup in, in November. Thank you, my friend. Okay, we're back. Uh, let's preview the Iran versus South Korea match again to be played on Thursday, 24th of March in the Seoul World Cup Stadium. Um, how should we line up, Pejman? Give us your 11. Okay, my 11, I think it should be the, the strongest one we have uh, with the players we have. So, Amir Abedzadeh in goal. Uh, in four in the back, I think it's it's a tough one. I think uh, Hossein Kanoni and uh, Majid Hosseini as centre-backs. And uh, full-backs, uh, Noor Afkan and I would say Khalil Zadeh on the right. It's a tough... I'm not sure about that one, to be honest. Uh, in the midfield, since Said Ezatoloi is injured, uh, we will probably see Ehsan Hotsafi or Milad Salak. Uh, I'm fine with both of them. And then Vahid, I mean, if this is a 4 2 3 1 kind of, uh, but maybe it would be 4 3 3, but at the end of the day, end of the day it's just numbers. So uh, I would uh, like to have uh, Vahid Amiri, Alejandro Jahan Bakhsh, and Ali Kholizade and up front I will have Mehdi Taremi. Is that 11 or did I miss? Yeah. Out oh, of yeah. Someone? Oh, did you put two midfielders as well? You had the uh, High Safi and Nurlahi, if I'm not mistaken, or Salah? Um, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. Yeah, so, so, you're, so you're putting Osman on the bench. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, Okay. No, I'm I'm actually I'm actually intrigued by that because actually Osmoon hasn't been, let's be honest, in his best of form for Leverkusen. Uh, uh, Mr. Rashmi, what do you think? What would you, who, what would you play? I think uh, I will put Amir Abidzad uh, in the goal number one, and I have my doubts about the right back position uh, because it will be too early for actually Smiley Fat to play there. 
I think uh, Gulami has to play there because Gulami has played a lot of games uh, before he comes to Stella in the right back position. And then I would like to see Hosseini uh, and Kanani, two center backs, and Rafkan left. And uh, uh, on the midfield, I think we have to play with one number six to 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 have a uh, to to close the gaps on the on the center of the attacking midfield of Korea to with Norolahi and put Jahan Bakhsh on right side, Amir left, and I will play Golizad, Taremi, and Sardar. And Sardar and Taremi can change the position uh, the close to each other. Uh, like number nine and eleven, uh, yeah, something like that. And uh, you you need fast player, and Olizade uh, is fast. Taremi and Sadar are fast. Amiri is fast. Jahan Bakhsh can balance the team, keep the ball. He ha- he is also fast. And Nurullah has to get another another function or task on the team. He has to uh, cover the midfield. He doesn't have to play like a eight, number eight or number ten. And he has to be uh, on the front of the uh, last last uh, line. You know, that's what I think. Yeah, I, I do believe also that we should play with uh, a number six. You know, a deep lying midfielder. I, I believe. Iran always play better when we have three in midfield. I, I always stick by that. And actually, the last games when Sardar had COVID and, you know, we had to play Tarami as a striker on his own, I feel like we played a little, a little, a little a bit better than we did before. I think it was a little bit better. And I do think that is good to see, you know, Vahid playing as a number eight, you know, even Ahmad as a number six. I think you can, can do that at times. It would be hard to get South Korea, of course, but they're also missing players in South Korea in the midfield. So, it may be a little bit easier for him. Um, and I think that it's a good chance, again, maybe to see someone playing in this game as a number 10, you know, 8.5, you know, as a number, as a right-sided uh, center mid. And I do believe that, you know, the mid, the, the front three should be um, Osmond Taremi and Jahan Baksh or Koiza, depending on the choice. But of course, you can make substitutes. I also think that a 4-3-3, but I do think Taremi could play a little bit more to the left. Uh, I, I always feel like he can do that role uh, well. He sometimes does it for Porto as well, where he plays like a number a number 11 on the left and he comes inside. And I think he can do that. I don't see why he can't do that. So hopefully uh, we see something, but I do believe Skocic will play a 4-4-2 uh, in this match. Um I want to speak about South Korea a little bit. Of course, uh, it's going to be a tough game. We are away from home. It will be 60,000 capacity uh, crowd, you know, and they want to win. Both teams have to win this game because ultimately whoever wins this game uh, will have a good chance at finishing first place. And if you finish first place, again, a good chance you can get into pot, pot two in the World Cup draw come 1st of April, which is massive when you want, when you consider... Um, qualifying for the second round of world cup you know so we have to try and get to that first place position this is why this game is so important let's ask, i'm going to ask pejman how do we win this game what are the keys to success to victory and how do we deal with the likes of uh, son young men uh, and all the players that they have well i mean he's an amazing player uh mean and he he deserves all the credit and respect he gets uh, one of the best in in the Premier League uh, one of the best Asian players ever I mean he, he's really hard to stop so what we need to think of uh, is to stop his teammates to uh, to letting them give the ball to to son I think that's what key is so I think Iran have always been good with with the high pressure uh, kind of tactics they've done. Um, now we haven't been playing so many good teams such as South Korea. This is like the only good team they want to have played against the last two years. When I mean good, I mean at the same level as Iran. Uh, I'm not saying the other teams are bad. I'm just saying that maybe not the same level as Iran. So I do believe that uh, uh, South Korea will uh, try to, they'll probably have the more uh, of, uh, position of the ball so Iran with its high pressure uh, which 
I think both Taremi and Jahan Bakhsh proved uh, me really good at can make them to to make some errors to to force them to take decisions that are really that smart and we know how good an effect Iran is at uh, this kind of counterattacks yeah. uh, which I believe Iran have to accept that this will be probably the first game that they will have to think like that again so yeah and uh, give the ball to Taremi Osmoon Jahan Bash uh, they seem to know what to do absolutely so Shimi- Obviously, this is a tough game. This is a big game for Iran. This is a game that they have to win, uh, as I said, for the importance of finishing first in the group, but also uh, for the pot uh, in the World Cup. Um, what are your thoughts and uh, predictions, please? Yes, this is a special game for Iran. Uh, and always it has been special games uh, between two countries. Is for the prestige of uh, Iran football is the for what Pejman says uh, we have to finish as the first place for the uh, World Cup uh, uh, to get the in, in right pot, you know. And I think I think uh, what Pejman says uh, um, they could have uh, more ball position. They could have m- much more. They will play very high. They will, uh, I'm 100% sure, they will uh, force Iran to go back and they will uh, uh, play very high and they will uh, they cover all the positions. But this is also a good thing for Iran because we have abilities to, to come out of this small uh, spaces. We can, we can have a good reaction football. We, can, we have a player that can play in very small spaces they can handle the ball and uh, we have technical players. And uh, the only thing is very important. Uh, you have to look, the important play can be important if they are free, which means uh, we, have, we don't have to defend just the player. We have to defend also the spaces. The, the, the play against Korea is different than play against Iraq or Syria or Lebanon. Because uh, they, they play on the ball, they, uh, they, are, they love the ball, they get the ball and they start the football. But the Korea, they play without ball. They, they, they have lots of jogging, lots of movements in the spaces that you never see that before. And which means that uh, you have to be careful and to cover, uh, I, I, if, if they play, uh, I think they will play uh, against Iran with two uh, strikers. Uh, I think uh, Sung and, uh, and Aoi Jo. And they are players, they can play left, right, they move a lot. And the one thing is to, 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 to cover the spaces. And another, another thing is that don't let the Korean uh, midfielders, uh, the players, fit song if he doesn't get the ball it, it won't be dangerous and that's that's most important thing which means that in in some cases on some positions uh, i believe the most of them has to be on midfield you have to play with very high uh, 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 press and don't let them let them dry uh, in the uh, direction of your uh, goal you know uh, let them play with their back against your goal. It's very important, and I think it would be it would be very necessary that uh, the Iran team will has to play with lots of disciplines, yeah. and uh, to, and to talk together, uh, look at each other, and and to, to to don't give any spaces to the Korean team. Yeah, one hundred percent. I think it's very important that you know we don't give the the likes of Son. The chances that he had in the last game, you know, he he scored a very easy goal in Ozadi Stadium, and uh, it was a little little bit frightening to be honest with you because we were all expecting, you know, a fairly simple game. Of course, South Korea are, are a tough team, but they're not as strong as they used to be. South Korea, um, and of course, as Steve mentioned, they have they are missing a couple of players, a couple of important players as well. So we'll see how it goes. I think. Uh, as I said, the key is that we do defend well. Defense is going to be, you know, the, the key. If we can keep that scoreline down on their part, um, and as Pejman said, we can feed the likes of Tarami and Osmoon 
as many chances as possible. Uh, you know, we can always score goals. Iran can always score goals against any team in Asia. There's no doubt about it. But as long as we defend properly, we defend organized, we're, we're resolute, uh, you know, I think we can cause issues on the, on the, on, on the break. But let's see what happens. You know, it's going to be a tough game uh, and it's going to be away from home. So we have to try and, uh, and win. Uh, as simple as that. Uh, you, know, you, you know, Arya John, it is not uh, just important what South Korea will do. What we do is much more important. Yeah. And, and we are talking about uh, uh, the uh, quality and abilities and uh, how strong is Korea, but don't forget they are much more afraid of Iran than we, uh, what we think, you know. They, they, we have a top players, we have yes. a top team, and uh, we have a most of the uh, best results. And that's important what we do. And I'm sure if we do what we have to do, we don't have to be worried about anything. Yeah, for sure. I think even South Korean media were mentioning that they believe that they are the underdogs in this match. So we'll see how it goes on, on Thursday. I'm going to get the prediction out first. I believe we'll win the game. Um, I believe we'll win 2-1. Uh, how about you, Pejman? I believe it will be 2-2. And Mr. Ashimi? It's difficult to say that, but I think we will see uh, more than one or two goals. I think uh, I think I believe it will be uh, two two. Very interesting. Okay, um, that's us. Hopefully, you guys enjoy the game. Hopefully, I win for the national team. We do want our team to finish uh, first. As I said, we also play against Lebanon uh, the following week on Tuesday. Um, thanks again to. Uh, Mr. Amir Hashimi and Steve Han for their time uh, for coming on our podcast giving their, their fantastic analysis appreciate it thanks to you Arya thank you thank, thank you me. very much thank you don't forget we'll have an article on our website globalzampodcast.com before uh, the day before the match uh, we'll, we'll, you can also, we, we can find all the links to, the, to where to watch the match uh, predicted lineups and also analysis just before the game. Also, we will do a live Twitter space before and after kickoff uh, on Thursday. So please join in on that. I want to hear your thoughts. Uh, stay tuned and follow us on all social media and podcast platforms. And Bejman, thanks again for coming on. Thank you, Aya. Great Thank to you. Be. Take care, guys. See you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Hello, my name is Ali Golizadeh and you are listening to Golbazan Podcast.